Greetings from CSI Delhi branch, eMedi News and Heartcare Foundation of India. Welcome to our show, Chat with Dr. KK. We have with us Professor Dr. M. Khalilullah, who has been recipient of Padma Shri and Padma Bhushan, who has been former director and head GB Panth Hospital, New Delhi, former member Scientific Council American Heart Association, and who is an honorary professor, the Cromwell Hospital, London. Welcome to our show. Thank you, KK. Uh, uh, we talk about syncope. Mm -hmm. When we talk about syncope, uh, it's, it's, it's a common phenomena. We do see almost a patient a day in our own practice. That means it will come back to a lot of GPs and, and people are panic. Sure. If somebody had a syncopal attack, he gets panic. Admit me, do everything. So we'll talk about ethically how to deal with a patient with syncope, basic minimum investigation so that we don't over investigate. Sim uh, syncope is a very common symptom occurring in all ages of population, more so in the age group beyond 40 years of age. It may be occurring many times in a week or in a day or occurring once in several months. Its uh, intensity may be very subtle and the patient just lose little shaky, that's all, and sometimes become so deeply affected by syncope that he may even drop down and become unconscious. So the grades of syncope are quite a bit. A situation can come when the patient can anticipate something going to happen to him, we call pre-syncope. Now all these symptoms have a lot of relevance to the clinical situation of a patient. It may be just fatigue, it may be uh, lack of uh, conditioning, anemia, uh, long uh, uh, eating intervals uh, and uh, or it could be manifestation of side effect of many drugs you know like blood pressure medicines and therefore I always do is take blood pressure recording sitting and standing so the patient is a fall of blood pressure we get to know that he is going to have fall of blood pressure you can either caution him or reduce the medication in such a manner the symptom goes away or it can happen spontaneously while sitting or driving a car or talking to somebody and suddenly he feels uh, uh, a loss of environment, he becomes hazy, he becomes drowsy and he may even drop down. Now these things can happen because of three, four very significant conditions like arrhythmia. It could be the slowing of the heart rate, very slow heart rate like sinus bradycardia, sinus arrest or it could be a matter of AV block maybe second degree AV block, complete heart block. Intermittent complete heart block can occur for a short period of time, occurring from few seconds and it will just become normal later on. So if you don't detect the patient during that period of time, you will miss the diagnosis completely. Or it could be very fast heart rate because the heart is like a pump and each time it receives about 100 cc of blood and pushes 70 cc out and keeps 30, 30 cc back with it so that the stroke volume maintains the blood pressure and the cardiac output. In case the heart rate goes fast, then the filling time of the ventricle becomes less and therefore the output decreases and therefore the blood pressure can fall. So sudden increase in the heart rate, sudden irregularity of the heart rate can also cause fall of blood pressure and cause syncope. It could be related to something occurring in the heart. Maybe a patient got a very tight valve lesion like mitral stenosis or aortic stenosis, aortic valve stenosis. When you are walking, the blood flow cannot increase beyond a certain limit through the narrow valve and the flow to the brain decreases critically and the patient becomes gets syncope. So this could be a manifestation of significant heart disease like severe pulmonary stenosis, severe mitral stenosis, severe especially severe aortic stenosis and in aortic stenosis it's an openness sign because when this happens if the patient has critical aortic valve narrowing. This can happen in a patient with hypertension where the blood pressure is very high and when he is walking the blood pressure shoots up and the artery in the brain can go to spasm and can cause syncope and uh, other symptoms and therefore blood pressure, high blood pressure, low blood pressure as I told you earlier can also cause syncope. That is regarding the blood pressure. The third area of patients who come with this kind of problem have cerebrovascular problem which could be coming from the carotid artery or the vertebral artery or from the neck uh, problem like cervical spondylosis. When the patient can twist his neck 
and the blood flow to the posterior part of the brain decreases critically and the patient gets syncope. Now here, by and large, there is a little vertigo. Uh, there is a there is a, the difference between a vertigo and a syncope. Syncope causes blankness in front of the eye, blankness into the eyes, and finally becomes dark. Whereas in vertigo, things rotate around in clockwise or anti-clockwise direction and there is feeling of nausea also. Now, there are situations when patients have got tumor in the heart, which can be mobilizing between the left atrium and left ventricle or between the right atrium and right ventricle and it can critically block the valve in such a manner, the blood flow to the ventricles either right or left decreases critically and the blood flow and the cardiac output decreases. So, one of the causes of tumor in the heart life, left atrial myxoma, right atrial myxoma can also be caused this. Another condition where this can happen is which is a with a genetic problem is hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. When like muscles in the arm when you exercise too much they become hard and thick. The heart muscles inside the cavity can also become hard and the septum becomes too thick. It becomes so thick that the outflow tract the, the passage of the blood to go from the left ventricle to the aorta the big artery can also be blocked to some extent. And when the patient walks about and does exertion and the heart rate increases, the space, the area becomes and the passage becomes so critically narrow, the blood flow to the brain can, can diminish and one can have syncopal attack. So, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is a very common cause of syncope in some patients who have systolic murmur in the, in the left central border and, uh, and have this. The uh, one, one more group of people who are physiologically otherwise normal are people who are sports people involved in very vigorous activity. The vagal tone becomes so high that the sinus state comes down like athletic heart and they can get a little syncope. I know of a young man who had come to me at the age of 24. He was a mountaineer all his life. He had a heart rate of about 60 and was developing intermittently AV block. He said he's getting married next year and he wants to go the last tracking into the, up the Himalayas before he gets married. When I saw ECG, I said no you are not fit to climb again because he is one of the person who goes to syncope and up the mountains it drops, I don't think anybody can save him. So people who are in very vigorous exercise, sports people can do that, people who have high adrenaline secretion, you have seen people playing games, competitive games, footballers, they suddenly drop down, you know, they can develop arrhythmia. So people with vigorous exercise and uh, a very high degree of physical condition can also be target of this phenomena. I think there have been some other causes of syncope like uh, What about bradycardia hypertension syndrome? So oh yes, 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 you know like hypersensitive keratosinus sinus syndrome where the patient can get uh, typical feeling uh, fall of blood pressure and uh, slowing of the heart rate and so on sweating. This is not unusual in some people who are very sensitive keratosinus. sinus. Therefore, people who have that kind of phenomena, they should not tie the neck very high, tightly or, or try and squeeze their neck muscles and so when on. When do we do tilt test uh, in a patient? Well, I think uh, you, I would suggest that in patient who does not have an obvious cause of uh, syncope on the ECG or, or physical examination, should undergo a tilt test, definitely. It is one of the screening tests which can give very vital information, especially in terms of it's a hyper okay. to no, I'll go other way around. If a patient right. comes to us in a, in a GP practice or with a MD physician, <clears throat> he should be able to detect any valvular disease by clinical auscultation. So, sure. so if the clinical auscultation is normal, yes, can we get rid of echo? Unless you want to rule out a, a, even even tumors will have intermittent murmurs. So a good yes. physical examination will obviate the need for echo as the first test. Maybe, yes. As the first test. Maybe, yes. Okay. So, yes. therefore, if a person comes to you with syncope, yes. with a good clinical examination mm. normal, we'll the confirm. first two investigations should be a 24 hour holter and a tilt test. Absolutely. And a tilt, tilt test, test. And a tilt test. And if 24 hour holter, which normally uh, may or may not be done, may or may. will certainly, I tell you, the yield is very high, almost 90, 92%, 95%. But in some people where the phenomenon is extremely Intermittent, you can do seven days Holter monitoring okay. now. That's possible. Patient triggered sim, uh, event devices available, event recorders available. Okay. Uh, what is the role of treadmill in such then, situation? Then people who have uh, uh, ischemic heart disease, you know, where the ECG is normal but there is history of chest pain, 
and history of syncope with chest pain. I think she would go treadmill test definitely. So, so, so the basic investigations come say is a holter. Yes. If normal, go for a tilt test. Yes. If normal, go for a treadmill. Treadmill test. And before that, should do an echo in this patient to ensure that there is no non-obstructive cardiomyopathy, hypertrophic Which cardiomyopathy. Which may be clinically Which missed. May be clinically missed. And you put him on the on the treadmill and put him to difficulty. So a screening echo should be indicated. And, and the role of NGO? And if, with, with all this, with all this, I think if there is a positive TMT test, of course you will do an NGO. But I think when patients of tachycardia and bradycardia or AV block, electrophysiological studies are indicated. Where you to find out what is, what is the status sinus node function, what is the status AV node conduction or distal his bundle or, or Purkinje conduction or there is inducible arrhythmia, supraventricular or ventricular arrhythmia which can cause this phenomena. I have seen some young people coming with uh, drop attacks and you do a holter to find that short uh, non-sustained runs of VT, you know, and uh, the patient dropping down. You put an AICD and he gets cured. The life is life is saved, you know. So 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 graded patient, investigation. So the the that the take home message is yes. syncope should not be ignored till you no, find out the cause. Absolutely, absolutely you find you, the cause. You need to find out the cause, I, I, even if I, you have I, to go to any extent for absolutely, investigation. Absolutely, absolutely. Because that is treatable condition, you know. I have seen all my life, fifty two years of my experience, I have seen so many patients. I know of a very senior officer in the government of India who was uh, attending a meeting with the visiting uh, defense minister in a five-star hotel and I was att attending a wedding ceremony where I was told that somebody had dropped down when I went to see him. I found the patient had a pulse rate of 12. I gave him a cardiac massage, bring out. When he was recovering, he again and again went back again. So again, the cardiac massage came out. I took him to my hospital and I told him, you've got AV block. So he said, no, he is suffering from epilepsy. So I, it took me hard to explain to him and convince his boss, very difficult boss, I won't take his name, to convince that this, mean, this man needs a pacemaker. I put in a pacemaker, I stopped all his epileptic drugs, anti-epileptic drugs, and the man thanked me, okay, thank God Dr. Sabi saved me from anti-epileptic drugs and its side effects. So correct diagnosis can make all the difference in the quality of life a patient. So what Dr. Khalilullah says is, be aware, don't misdiagnose mitral stenosis as asthma and don't misdiagnose complete heart block transient patients with epilepsy. These are the patients who require a continuous treatment. Uh, let's thank the Dr. Khalil. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. That's all for today. We'll it's come back with one more show. Till that, goodbye. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye.